Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Mo and today I'm going to be speaking about coronavirus COVID-19. This is actually my, li my first live stream video and I was thinking so much about what to present in the first one so I decided to go with the coronavirus since there's a big hype about it and everybody's actually talking about it, what it is, how to protect and then there have been numerous rumors about how it can infect people or how to protect yourself so i'm just going to give more of a scientific approach about how what is coronavirus and how to protect yourself so what are coronaviruses they are a large family of viruses that cause illness ranging from the common cold to more severe diseases such as MERS and SARS and you remember SARS from 2003 and how it killed so many people so why are coronaviruses called by this name they're called corona corona basically means a crown they have spikes on their surface as you can see and these spikes look like a uh, look, look like a crown these were first identified in 19 uh, in the 1960s, actually in the middle uh, 1960s. So if these viruses have been around since the 1960s, why are they bad again? Well, you may already know that sometimes coronaviruses that infect animals can evolve and make people sick as well. And basically become a new species or a new human uh, coronavirus that we do not know. We have no vaccines for and we have no uh, treatment for. This is called zoonotic diseases, meaning that it uh, moves from the animal to the human. So how is this a zoonotic disease? The Wuhan coronavirus, the virus that is currently uh, uh, causing a big hype in, 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 in China, it's called the Wuhan coronavirus. This is thought to have originated in bats which may have passed to another species most likely pigs and then to humans I know there has been lots of talks about snakes and uh, how snakes can infect but so far the evidence that snake is um, is a host or an origin is debatable some scientists support that some scientists go against it so that's why I did not include it today so the new virus that has been uh, mutated or been formed is called COVID-19. Co is mean corona, V is virus, and D, disease 2019. So in short, it's called COVID-19 or the Wuhan virus. So actually, when you call it coronavirus, this is basically the whole family. Whereas this specific one that is causing all the troubles nowadays, it's called COVID-19 or the Wuhan virus and this is very bad why because it has a person to person spread so it's not just from animal to human actually it goes from person to person from human to human and this is bad how does it spread the COVID-19 close contact with one another so if two people are close by and one of them is infected within uh, a distance of six feet or almost two meters basically uh, one can infect uh, the other mainly it gets spread through droplets if you have uh, if somebody who has the disease or the virus has cough or sneezes he can actually infect another uh, person it can also uh, spread by touching a surface or an object that has the virus on it and then uh, if you touch for example like let's say somebody has touched the doorknob and he was infected with that virus even if some of the virus get on that doorknob if you go next and use the doorknob and then you touch your mouth or nose or even uh, the eyes that can spread the virus so the eyes is not as common but it can happen so when does coronavirus spread so people are thought to be uh, most contagious when they have uh, symptoms when they're sick with the virus 
It even might be possible before they show any signs of sickness. This is when the virus is still in the incubation period, uh, meaning that somebody has the virus but is not showing any symptoms at all. He does not appear uh, to be sick. So he can still be uh, infective and he can infect other people with the virus. So I've been talking about how it can spread from a person to a person and even from a surface or a doorknob or um, other surfaces to the human, but how easily can it spread? So the current uh, virus, which is the COVID-19, seems to be spreading easily and sustainably uh, in the Hubei uh, uh, province in, in China. Whereas the same virus in the United States, it has spread from person to a person, but has occurred only among a few uh, close contacts. We don't know the reason for that, so it seems to be spreading more in China than the United States. Maybe because there is more people, there are more people infected in China than the United States, or maybe strict, more strict regulations. We don't really know. These are just observational um, findings. So do we really know? So what are the symptoms uh, of the COVID-19? For a confirmed, if somebody has actually confirmed with the virus, so many symptoms have been reported, uh, ranging from just regular fever or cough or shortness of breath up to severe illness and death. So it looks more like flu symptoms. They're not very specific. So if somebody is infected for the virus, how do we test for that? So the CDC here in America, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, has developed a new um, what's called uh, real-time PCR diagnostic panel. This is basically a test uh, intended to use with the upper and lower respiratory specimens. So if we have a person that we suspect whom, uh, that he may have the virus, what we do with that? We get specimens from the upper and lower respiratory tract and we uh, we process them through this test and uh, this is how it's done in, in America. So how do you protect yourself from this virus? If you are a healthcare provider always be on the lookout for people who recently traveled to or coming back from China especially if they have fevers and respiratory symptoms. If somebody came from China or one of the countries now that have the virus, if they show signs of flu symptoms, you should automatically, if you're a doctor or a nurse or a health uh, care practitioner, you should always suspect that this person may have the virus. If you personally have been to China and have been to exposed to someone uh, who is sick with COVID-19, with the coronavirus, in the last 14 days, you may have some limitations on your movements. And you probably won't be even listening to this at this point because that means if, if you have been exposed, that means you're locked somewhere uh, get going under investigations for the virus. So the problem is that there is no vaccine for the COVID-19. Unfortunately, there is no vaccine. However, there are some preventive measures. How effective are they? That's questionable, but you always want to protect yourself. First off, as general precautions, avoid touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth. If you're sick with an upper respiratory um, tract uh, disease or like cough or common cold, if you're very sick, that means your immune system is not very strong, you should stay home. When you sneeze or you cough, you should always cover your um, mouth and nose with a tissue and then throw that tissue in the trash and then clean up and disinfect your hands uh, frequently after uh, touching objects. Also, if you have common like objects that people touch in your workplace like the doorknobs or so you can disinfect them by alcohol wipes or cleaning them with soap and water or spray alcohol spray as well that that's a good idea so question is 
the one million dollar question should we wear a face mask the CDC surprisingly does not recommend that people who are well to wear a face mask like if you're well and you're healthy and you have not been exposed to anybody who has been to China like the CDC does not recommend that you wear a face mask not even for common cold or other respiratory diseases and certainly not for the COVID-19 but who should wear a face mask a face mask a face mask should be used by people who show symptoms of COVID-19 and this is to pre to help preventing them from spreading the virus to other people of course this is an uh, um, uh, not a very accurate statement here because if somebody has been confirmed to be uh, infected with the virus that means they're going to get locked up in the hospital basically for treatment or for symptomatic management as we're going to go through that uh, later the use of face mask is also very important for healthcare workers and people who are taking care of uh, someone uh, in close setting just like at home or healthcare facility so if you're a doctor who's taking care of a patient that you're suspecting he has COVID-19, both you and the patient actually should be wearing a face mask. And I have a face mask here that I'm going to show you later and how uh, to wear them. I have a few of them. Wash your hands. Always wash, wash, wash your hands as often as you can. You can never wash your hand enough. You should always wash it with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. You should wash your hands after going to the bathroom, before and after eating, after you blow your nose, after you cough, after you sneeze, always wash your hands. If you don't, uh, when you're outside and you have no access to water and soap, you can always use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer, just like this one here, and you can even have these uh, mobile bottles that you can carry you around with you and always use them to disinfect your hand as much as you can so what is the treatment for COVID-19 as you all know unfortunately um, until this moment where I'm talking to you right now there is no specific antivirus treatment uh, available for the virus People who get infected with the virus, they just develop general uh, illness and multi-organ failure. We should just support these as doctors. As doctor, we provide like symptomatic relief and support the vital organs and functions. If they have kidney failure, uh, we take care of that. If they have like other organ failure, we take care of that. So it's more like symptomatic treatment. We're not really curing it, but we're making the patient feel better and this is a very 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 sad statement that I just mentioned now so that's that's basically was a very brief introduction about the virus and so what I have here today I have like some face masks that you may see this is the N95 and this is another mask and this is a mask with a face shield. As I mentioned before, people who should be wearing masks are people who actually are at high risk. But if you're completely healthy and you have no contact with somebody who recently came from one of the countries that have the virus, you should not be wearing a face mask. So very, very important for wearing a face mask that you always should cover your nose. Because I see this all the time. You see surgeons or even people have been practiced for 20 years. And when they wear the mask, they just cover their mouth and not the nose. And I don't see what's the point of this. Honestly, like if it's up to me, people who wear the mask wrong should have their license provoked, to be honest with you. Because if you cannot wear a mask, then that you, you're in big trouble. Well, so most face masks have like a metal attachment here and the point of this is that actually you fit it to your nose so for this mask here you have this and you put it around your nose and you make it take the shape of your nose and then you have two straps you take the first strap you put it on here and then you take the second one while still holding the mask you take the second one and you put it 
over there. Here you go. And make sure to have a very, very good seal so that nothing will go in, nothing will come out. Of course, you can breathe. Some people find it very uh, not comfortable to breathe with this, but that's the way it should be. So you take that off. All right. I hope that this was helpful. And uh, let me... Uh, let me uh, know what you guys think of this stream and if you have any other topic or um, a subject you want me to discuss in a live stream, just let me know. Thank you so much.